Welcome back! Well, the evil wizard Mordek has captured our family, and in fact our entire castle. And this owl here has taken us to his employer, the wizard Crispin, for some help. And he's given us uh, something to let us talk to animals. Although, strangely, we were already able to talk to Cedric, so I guess he's not a normal owl. As well as an old wand. The old wand doesn't seem to have any vitality left in it. Which uh, may or may not work. Doesn't seem to have much power, and in any case, if what Crispin said is true, it will have to get used to us first, before it will do anything to us, uh, uh, for us. He also sent Cedric uh, with us, and I really, really wish he hadn't. Cedric is like Crow in Longer's Journey, except annoying, and not funny, and useless. So, really, the only thing they have in common is that they're both talking birds. He's like the most annoying video game character ever, the Jar Jar Binks of video game sidekicks. But, um, at least, um, he made one useful suggestion, and that is to go to the town first, which is just about the most useful thing he'll do in this entire game. Well, actually, to be fair, he did suggest going to see Crispin, and if he hadn't, well, things may not have turned out the way uh, they are going to in the remainder of the game. Anyway, let's take a look around here. This is apparently Crispin's house. Pretty plain looking for a wizard, but I guess he's sort of retired or something. Nestled among the trees of the forest sits the wizard Crispin's worn but cozy cottage. Impatiently, Cedric waits for Graham. How dare he be impatient. A small cellar door is located under the house. A small well is located near the cottage. Thick pane windows adorn the small house. It is difficult to see through them. A tiny pond adds charm to Crispin's forested home. Come on, Graham. There's nothing here. Let's go. Okay. Really? I want to go back inside. Don't be wasting your time coming in here. Young man, I've done all I can for you. Now it's up to you. Well, anyway, I'm not going to be here for a little while. There's an emergency I have to attend to in a neighboring land. I'll try to keep an eye out for you, but this is something you and Cedric are going to have to do yourselves. I wish you the best, King Graham. I appreciate all you've done, Crispin. I'll be on my way now. Okay, no further help from Crispin, it seems. So let's get on our way. Cedric said the town was to the south, so let's uh, head towards the south. It seemed to be the sensible thing to do. Graham, watch out! A poisonous snake! And a meme was born. <laughs> as well as a running joke throughout this Let's Play series. But then again, it's King's Quest. You have to make that joke. It's required. And in any case, Cedric is right. There is a snake there. Apparently a poisonous one. A large, venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. Why are there always venomous snakes? Why are there never any constrictors in these games? Well, I'm sure that this particular snake won't mind me passing through. I'm so sure of it that I'm creating my usual death save game. The 
that wasn't wise, Graham. He who speaks with forked tongues should never be trusted. Apparently so. First death. Yay. That sure was a lot quicker than in King's Quest 4, wasn't it? And I can guarantee you it won't be the last death. Mm, maybe we can try and fling the, sh the snake out of the way or something. Stay away. This is my path. Oh my god. Graham is a parcel mouth. Oh wait, it's probably just because of that thing Crispin gave us. Stay away. He doesn't have anything else to say. Maybe we can magic him away with the magic wand. Graham gives the wand a good shake, but it only fizzles and dies. Well, so much for that idea. Well, hopefully there's nothing important in that direction. See how the path goes to the east up into the mountains? That's the route to Mordak Castle. Figures. Okay, we need to find a way to get past that snake. Now, logic suggests that we basically just walk around him. I mean, these rocks don't really look like we couldn't, you know, go around them or climb over them or whatever. But no, of course, that won't work. Cedric will uh, usually tell you what's in um, neighboring screens when you talk to him. One of the few things he's good for in this game. Ooh, if you follow the path to the south over the next rise, you'll come to the town. Cedric seems to be quietly contemplating their current situation and so is not inclined to indulge in conversation right now. And that's a good thing, because the more he keeps his mouth shut, the more we don't have to listen to him. He doesn't seem uh, to want to tell us what to do west, even though we can go to the west. In any case, let's head to the town, which is to the south, and let's look around here a little bit, actually. A worn dirt path wanders through a thick wood, alive with the sounds of many creatures. Between the trees, to the east, Graham can see the outline of a great mountain range. I'm glad, by the way, that they got a different narrator for King's Quest VI. In any case, the voice acting in King's Quest VI is much better than this game. This game is mediocre at best and terrible at times. Most of the voice actors are actually just Sierra employees. King Graham himself is actually voiced by George Mandel, who uh, was the designer for Space Quest VI, you might recall. And there is the town! Anything to say about the town, Cedric? Follow this road along the river, you'll come to the town bakehouse. You might find something delicious. <laughs> I mean, useful there. He's actually talking about to the west. He doesn't say anything about the town itself. The quaint little town of Serenia nestles at the base of a great snow-capped mountain range which rises sharply to the east. I thought Serenia was the name of the land. Maybe it's the name of the land and the town. Can't look at the moon. Or I think that's the moon anyway. Secure within a small pen, a spotted cow quietly chews her cud. A small tributary of the larger river powers an old water wheel as it flows through the town. A wild river tumbles down from the eastern mountains and flows swiftly below the small town. Oh yeah, and that river? It's kind of dangerous. What the hell was up with that? It's walking really slowly back there, for some reason. Anyway, the river is kind of dangerous, as I was saying. So apparently, King Graham has gotten even worse at swimming than he already was in the previous games. No, Graham, don't! Too bad. Graham's swimming skills were no match for the mighty river. And you immediately die. 
It's always nice when you can die in a game without any warning that something is really dangerous before that happening. Especially because Graham could swim in previous games. But, well, as we'll uh, come to find out, that's very, very common in this game. Let's head into town! Are you coming, Cedric? If you're going into town, I'll just wait for you here. I had a nasty run-in with a big dog once, and I feel much safer out here. Apparently not. Get used to that. Cedric is a coward, and will rarely actually go anywhere with us. Which is part of the reason why he's so useless. A nice quaint looking town. Quaint houses and little shops line the town's main cobblestone street. And I must say I do like including towns in these games, as I already said uh, during Kansas 3, because even though we don't meet that many people, the fact that there's a town means that the land is almost automatically not as sparsely populated as it might seem. Oh, that kid's booking. He's playing with a hoop. Bro, looks fit. The town is busy with people going about their daily chores. You can try and talk to the people, by the way. Nice day, isn't it? I think that's actually um, Roberta Williams herself, who does the voice of the women in the town. Good day. Out of my way, mister. Hey. Nobody ever taught you to be uh, polite to your elders. Well, it seems that most of the townspeople have not much to say. But what about this guy who's working on a wagon or something in the side street? While blocking an alleyway, a frustrated man fixes a broken wheel on his wagon. Let's see if we can offer him some help. How goes it with you, good fellow? Not well, I'm afraid. This old wagon's always giving me trouble. Can I help you in any way? Thank you kindly, but I think I can handle it. All right then, good luck. Thanks. With this wagon, I'm gonna need it. I think that guy is Roger Wilco's son. Sure sounds like him. Graham notices an old wooden barrel on the street corner. Anything in the barrel? Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old rotting fish. Um, well, let's take it, why not? Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes, phew, the smelly old fish. I just hope we won't be carrying that fish around for the entire game, like in some other games, uh, I know. Oh, well, check out the rest of this town in the next video.